Hello everybody, we hope you can see and hear us just fine. We are back, I am Scott from Red Video and this is... Edie. Edie, my co-host and co-producer of this show that we do called Open Circuit every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our viewers that are watching from around the world who are not in our time zone. It's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're really excited to be back and hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, we are so excited today because we have a, an incredible guest that we're going to speak to. He's waiting right now uh, from where he is in Chiapas, Mexico. And his name is Alejandro Garcia Contreras. Uh, I, I sometimes say this uh, about other artists, but this one I really mean he's one of my favorite artists in the world, and I can't wait to show s some people on our show his work and talk to him about his ideas. And we have a special treat because he's, he runs a residency uh, where he lives, and he's going to give us a little tour of it. I'm very excited to see that. We'll talk to Alejandro in a few minutes. But first, we do something kind of fun here on uh, Open Circuit. Edie likes, uh, does, each day that she's here, she does a um, video game review. We even have a title for her. It's Edie's Video Game Review. And uh, today, today we, we do all sorts, Edie reviews all sorts of uh, video games. Um, this one's not really a video game. It's not really a video game, but it's kind of fun and similar to that, and it is free. Let's take a look at what, uh, what Edie's uh, got here. Edie, why don't you tell people about what, you're, what you've got here? It's called Adobe Arrow, mm -hmm. and it's like, um, I need a surface to go on to, though. Okay, what um, about the, the table here? Okay. So right. you find a surface. Yes. And then um, you can put things on it, like furniture um, and animals and people. So, this so you go to starter assets. Okay. And then you can do um, like basic shapes, furniture. You can put letters. You can put plants. It's really fun. Okay. And so I really like basic shapes because you can make it like just almost floating so and so this isn't really a video game like you say it's more like augmented reality isn't it yeah wow so you just plop that 3d object onto the paper on this desk here in front of us and now a chair okay okay why don't you put one more down there and, and show our viewers how you can like uh, experience it by moving it around, moving around it. Oh, okay. And then you can move around, and it stays and it where stays you put there. it. And um. Wow. It's really fun. That's amazing. So you can make. You can always second move them. It's it's fun. That's incredible. And this is just a little desk set up, but in a whole yeah. room, you could make a whole environment, couldn't you? Yeah. Easy way to get going, making some augmented reality projects uh, right on your phone. Wow, that's incredible, just using your phone's camera. And you don't have to put in the hundreds of hours, like thousands of hours, like someone we know, to learn how to model things from scratch, how to move things, how to use Unity. And you can do it right here in your phone quite Quite easily. That's incredible. Wow. Well, thanks for showing us that, Edie. Do you have yeah. anything else to say? Uh, I've so made home environments. I don't know if they save them. So this is a, this is a free app that you can download. Yeah. It's from Adobe. And it's called Adobe Arrow. And it's a pretty... It's really fun. It's really fun and not too hard to get going with. That's the one thing we do talk about. A lot is uh, just trying technology, just not being afraid of things and just, just seeing what you can do with it without expectations. We're getting a little peek of our guest in the background there. That's okay. <laughs> but first, before we talk to Alejandro, we're going we're gonna to talk about um, some of our upcoming guests on Open Circuit. 
Let's see, I decided uh, on the weekend, and it takes a lot of work to prep each show, but I decided I had a bit of extra time yesterday. So instead of just going through this boring list like we do every day, I made some title cards. So these, these are some of our upcoming guests. Tomorrow we have Robert Dayton. He's joining us from where he's at in BC, talking about his career in music and art and a lot about his latest project, uh, book project that he's working on about the history of Canadian glam. Uh, next, we just confirmed this guest, uh, Guelph artist Carolyn Riddell is uh, gonna join us on Wednesday to talk about Oh, things that are going on in her life, her career as an artist, her printmaking, and uh, many other things. I'm excited to talk to Carolyn. Then, also from Guelph, uh, we have Versa coming up on May 1st. Going to talk about their live AV project, Alex and Monica. Then, next week, we have Julie Ferranda is joining us from Glasgow, Scotland. Very excited to hear about what she's up to and talk about some of her video and sculpture and other projects that she does then <clears throat> dustin seabrook coming up uh, may 5th talking about his project isolation video series um, then another guelph artist corey steckel joining us talking about what he does and his, in particular his ideas around his amazing uh, and prolific collage projects he's got thousands of collages and uh, i'm really interested to talk to him about uh, how he does that and, and how he thinks about it. <clears throat> so that's fantastic. I'm very excited for, for, all, for all of these upcoming guests here on Open Circuit. But now it's time to introduce today's guest, who I'm very excited to chat about. I love speaking with our guest, Alejandro Garcia Contreras. Um, there's a funny thing about Alejandro. Um, I didn't really like... Uh, find him on purpose. Uh, I researched a lot of artists and for some reason I kept seeing his images coming up on the internet kind of randomly over a few years. And I was always fascinated by them. I always thought his work was super fresh and amazing. And then uh, somehow, uh, somehow we came together and uh, I worked with him a few times here through Ed Video Projects and other things. And uh, it's very, uh, very exciting every time I get to see him and I'm excited to chat with him. In fact, uh, like, like Amy Lockhart, um, I actually wrote uh, an article, if you Google why Alejandro Garcia Contreras rules, wrote an article about three years ago for uh, Kazoo Fest when he was part of an exhibition uh, at Kazoo HQ called Present Rituals with a bunch of um, other really amazing, amazing artists. So let's take a look and see if we can find Alejandro live from Chiapas, Mexico. Let's take a look. I think he's there. Can you see us in here as Alejandro? Hello, Scott. How are you? I'm very good. Hi, <laughs> I'm good. We're doing great, and it's a real treasure, a real treat to see you today. Um, how are you doing? Pretty good. Um, well, uh, lockdown in house, no? How it needs to be. Um, trying to to work um, and trying to keep going with the with the normal activities. Uh, but for sure, it's uh, we are passing on something very strange and particular. So we don't know exactly how we're going, but we are going okay. I'm I'm very very happy to hear that that you're you're safe and you're in a good place, and uh, also that you have what you need around you uh, to to continue doing uh, what what you're doing. Um, just for yes. our viewers. Uh, benefit um i'm gonna show people uh where you at because where you're at because it's not just uh far away from here but it's uh in a really unique uh place um in mexico i sometimes tell people that they if you want to know where you're at look at a map of mexico and look at the very very southern tip of it <clears throat> you're right at the very very bottom of it and um uh, can you tell us a little bit about where you're at in Chiapas before we get into your work? Yes. Well, um, I'm from Tapachula, Chiapas. Me here in a little town called Carrillo Puerto, uh, Paradise, uh, as you can hear, and and, and a very um, how to say it, fertile 
um, territory so everything can grow up, up easily and there's so many fruits and beautiful things to look around like waterfalls and jungle and beautiful animals too well I can... we are a little bit far from from the I can hear a little bit of the parrots uh, in the yeah. background. It's the jungle, right? So uh, you're competing with nature there or, or trying to exist with it, maybe both. Uh, I'm very excited <laughs> later in our interview to, for you to show us around. Uh, can't wait to see what it looks like there, some of the plants, uh, some of your work set up in the garden. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of pictures, but I've never had a video tour of it. So let's start right away with, I, I love to back it up with our, with our guests. I don't know why, but I love to talk about some of their like really early experiences with art, um, how they maybe got the idea uh, to, uh, to get involved in doing creative things as their career. Can you tell us about yours? Yeah, well, um, I think it was a very uh, natural um, impulse from, from a child. I always like to, to 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 draw to make uh, little sculptures with uh, with clay, and my mom she was very into improve uh, these abilities on me, and in some moment very young I start reading. My parents have this kind of rule that obligate me to read every day half an hour per day, and I think that's really really uh, helped me to open my imagination and start looking for different kind of stuff and probably that was kind of the beginning that with uh, a lot of TV cartoons and cinema and music and that's the way that I grow up into arts because in this region we don't have access to to museums or or galleries at all there's nothing like that um, in this part of Mexico well, while you're talking, I'm, I'm going to actually play in the background. Um, it's not one of your main things that you've done. We're we'll talk about some of your uh, sculpture and 2D work, but you also have made some videos and filmed. And uh, one of them that I'm going to show is the one that we showed at Kazoo Fest about three years ago. It's a, a Super 8 film, I believe. By yeah, uh, but it's the name. The name is By This River Through hollow lands and we're just going to watch that and uh, talk about a little bit about chiapas uh, uh, and uh, sort of your experiences growing up um, so this this film is shot uh, as i understand in chiapas but also los angeles kind of blending it together and uh, some of the footage I, i'm very fascinated by this idea that you told me about that you've made some work about is with the uh, um, like the Easter celebrations and the Easter uh, parade. That's very unique um, to Chiapas and its traditions and what happens. Um, can you tell us a little bit about about that for our viewers who might not be familiar? Because Chiapas is a very, like in some ways, I think some people might consider it uh, the most unique part, uh, the most unique state of Mexico with its own, a lot of its own things happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, there is this uh, very interesting tradition in the town. Uh, it's a Via Crucis. It's like a reactment of the death of Jesus. But uh, in a kind of way, people start doing distortions in the history. And now they create their own characters. And, and there is a lot of misunderstanding between this. So they make these crazy customs with different materials, with whatever they have. And they use a lot of uh, influence from pop culture, mixing it, this with these biblical tales, a new kind of uh, understanding that these people is adding to the celebration. So this is creating a kind of a weird a mix of symbology and uh, a strange paganic traditions mixed with pop culture. So it's kind of the, the background of this uh, celebration. Uh huh, and yeah, the, the the video was shooting in in this region of uh, Chiapas, in a river close to Carrillo Puerto, and as you say, uh, there is a half that was shooting in Los Angeles, and right now we are working in a documentary about this celebration with Hazel Hill McCarthy, mm -hmm. uh, that you also know, and I hope uh, maybe for the end of this year. 
we will be finishing this this material and it's going to be a, a, a more um, like a documentary um, project about the the celebration no that's that's very fascinating and uh, i'm also like very excited to see that um yeah i worked with hazel i've never met her but i uh, i love her work and showed some of her work at kazoo fest and guelph as well and her and her partner uh douglas were at your residency before weren't they and that where you started this project well we met many years ago actually to be honest um hazel and uh, Hazel McCarthy, Hazel Hill McCarthy, and Eric Norhauser, they used to have a gallery in Los Angeles called Showcase, and that's how I met them like uh, 10 years ago. So we start working together from them, and now um, Hazel decided to get into this uh, celebration in a deeper way, and and we are working in this material for the last almost four years. Uh, I've been doing documentation of this for for more than 10 years now, but uh, so we are trying to put all this information together, uh, images, interviews, and our own understanding and topics about the celebration together. And the whole idea is not to make completely uh, this kind of documentary uh, video. It's more like a, between a documentary and an art piece, uh, mixing some strange stuff that actually have a reference with the celebration. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating, and I'm also uh, excited when we. What what I'd like to do now is take a look at some of your work, uh, um, but also talk about while we look at it about some of the ideas. And I'm curious, you know, how much uh, growing up there and seeing these celebrations might have influenced uh, what you do today in your contemporary art. So, I mean, you make, you're like one of those great artists who does kind of everything, uh, which I find is a, a particular uh, type of artist who uh, can really go between mediums uh, easily, depending on what they want to do. Um, but I think the thing you're probably most known for and that you spend the most time on is your sculpture work. Um, so what, it, what I'd like to do is we're, we're going to start with uh, some of that. I've got quite a few slides for our viewers here. Um, we're just going to play some of these while we're chatting. So primarily you're doing uh, porcelain work, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been working a lot with the, in ceramics, but most of them uh, with porcelain. And um, I don't know, I start having that fixation with porcelain because the, the material is very smooth. And that was the quality that I was looking for in my in my sculptures. But for be honest, I never consider myself a, a ceramist. I'm not a person who have the full knowledge or, or about the, all the chemical reactions and how the material actually is working. I take the ceramic more as an excuse to create a solid object that can be perdurable on time because um, what I learned uh, watching historic museums is that ceramics is one of the most important and, and first objects that humanity was uh, using and doing. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to aspire to, to that kind of uh, possibility that maybe the work can perdurate in time and, and I don't know, in 3,000, 1,000 years, another civilization of humans, or maybe not, they could find it and think about what 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 is this strange, whatever weird object. Well, I mean, we're gonna see a lot. We've seen some slides here of your work, but uh, we'll see a lot. We'll see a lot more soon. I'm curious about that history of uh, making ceramics or pottery or anything like that that does last so long. Uh, what? Is that long history of it, you know, people, archaeologists finding examples of this are tens of thousands of years old. Do you, does that really play into your concept uh, with you thinking about potentially how you could be immortal or a, a mystery a thousand years ago? Are you thinking about this long picture of, uh, of what you're doing with this medium? Yeah, I think I start thinking about it uh, once, I, I, as you say, I was working a lot with video. Uh, my first works in my career was basically video. And then I make this question about, so what's going to happen with the video in the future? If everything is like, uh, uh, keep it in digital or uh, in this kind of, uh, I don't know, different instruments that are not physical. 
uh, maybe it's going to get lost and never never we're going to have any uh, possibility to read it again. So that's why I, I became working in these uh, physical, more physical objects, because the painting makes me the, the same, the same um, observation, like, a, I don't know, a piece of canvas can be born. I mean, a ceramic can be broke too, but the possibilities that the material can keep in time, it's, it's bigger, no? So it's not, it's not like an egocentric topic. I don't care about if people know was made by, by me or not, but it's more about the, this kind of incognite, uh, like the mystery of finding something, something that you can actually um, read at all. And I think it's the same that happens with, with archaeology in general, in, 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 in the historical things right now. Uh, you found something and, and there's a lot of uh, speculation. So we never know actually the origin or the reasons why people was doing these objects, no? And then I think that's very funny. I think it's funny too, because uh, your work, I mean, I think c ceramics, porcelain has a lot of uh, paradoxes in it inherently, like it's very fragile, but it'll last a really long time. Um, that there, it's sort of like this very precious um, material that is very at home in a museum or a house, like on someone's shelf, like a very um, cheap little knickknack that you can buy at a thrift store or something that is priceless. But you actually, I, I find your work intriguing because you mix the paradoxes into your content too, like you're using ancient symbols, religious symbols, but also pop culture, like trashy uh, pop culture symbols. Um, what we're gonna, what we're looking at right now is uh, um, some of your ones from, uh, what's it called, the rock, uh, is it called Rock and Roll is Dead? I can't remember exactly, but. Uh, the rock is Dead, yeah, 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 the rock, series, yeah. Rock is Dead, and that's one I really, really loved, uh, you know, sort of Thanks. showing the death scenes of some really famous, famous rock stars. Like this is uh, what we're seeing as uh, Kurt Cobain with his head half gone. And uh, yeah. uh, how, how do you think about that as far as like how it can almost seal in something that's like from now into something very permanent? Like how, how do you think about that, Alejandro? I, I was in that moment, I was totally obsessed with the history of rock and roll in general. So I decided to make my own um, uh, dead uh, scenes from my favorite musicians. Uh, it's not. It's more like a, maybe a, a morbid fascination in that case, like a trying to understand how could be the the, the image, uh, because there's not many information about that. There's just a few anecdotes, and uh, so I, that's why I decided to make these sculptures. And at the end, the, the series is composed by, by six. Uh, you have Janis Joplin, you have Kurt Cobain, Sid Vicious, uh, Jim Morrison, and Elvis Presley. And I am forgetting one, Jimi Hendrix. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Who, who he, I think he was dying in, the, in his own room, uh, uh, vomiting. Uh, so yeah, the image is kind of like that, just the moment. And what, how do you think about your uh, porcelain ceramic work as far as like what um, I, can you almost like embed a very precious meaning uh, within it that can translate, uh, you know, across time, across culture, across belief systems? I mean, the, your imagery is very, very loaded with like strong ideas. Um, how do, how do you approach that to like when you're going to take your raw material to put like as much into it as you can figure out by contrasting ideas or images? Like how are you building this little like story into uh, what you're doing so well? Um, I feel I feel that I start to with the time I start to have a more uh, recognizable and, and intimate um language with with the specific symbols so now probably is more easy than when i was doing this rock series no um i start producing and 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 sculpting things that i i like in general uh, can be symbols idols objects 
and then uh, start playing with all these uh, tiny objects, uh, trying to create a composition with a, some more uh, like a principal or a, how to say it, protagonic um, characters. And that's how I start building the, the sculptures, the porcelain sculptures. But to be honest, I, I don't have any idea how this is going to look at the end. So it's something that is happening uh, in the process. Uh, some, some things uh, told me to add some stuff or to take it out. And, and at the end, it's just like trying to create kind of like a cultural puzzle no? that, that you can follow if you have the, the, the knowledge. It's kind of a joke also in relation with the, how contemporary art is working and how also occultism is working. So it's a very similar language because uh, if you don't have the, the tools to read the, the components from this object, it's going to be difficult to, to get the, the message. So it's trying to play, I'm trying to play between these uh, conceptual uh, contemporary art concepts and what is actually occultism in general. Right. And, and, you know, you spoke, we spoke a little bit about uh, where you grew up and some of the traditions there. And, I mean, there's a lot of overlap, I, I believe, uh, as far as your influence of um, mixing sort of uh, spiritual beliefs, um, religious beliefs, but with, like, contemporary symbols, um, like in the parades, uh, Easter parades. I mean, is, do you think what you're doing with your sculptures is like a, a natural result from where you grew up? Yeah, it's, it's totally like that. I, I need to add um, my grandfather, uh, my mom's uh, dad, he <coughs> used to have an a esoteric uh, coffee store. So he used to read the, the tarot and the coffee and to have a lot of uh, crystals, rocks and all this stuff for maybe like around 20 years until uh, he, he passed out. And by the other side, uh, my, my Chiapas family, my grandma, she, she grew up in this region and she knows so many legends about uh, the region. Uh, very, like, it's more like a lot of horror legends around, like very uh, scary legends. And when a child, I remember uh, every time we came to Tapachula, um, my, my grandma was telling me these stories and, and make me feel very scared and also thinking about the possibility that there are some places that still keeping these uh, fantastic characters alive, no? So for me, this region was representing a lot that, like uh, also in that place is happening this kind of stuff. And definitely, this this affect me in my in my understanding of what is uh, the mystery and and what is the horror. Can we talk just a little bit about um, that idea that you're so good at using in contemporary art that, well, maybe it's kind of becoming sort of more rare. Is people using um, like very powerful and and but real images in contemporary art to not always. Um, you know, to, I guess to talk about some of the big ideas of our society, of other societies, of politics, of power structures, of all these, all these things, you never um, shy away from them. Um, and, and sometimes your, your work can be like quite provocative as well. But, you know, why, why do you think that's important to, to still do um, in, in contemporary art? Like, how does that technique work for you with your viewer to sort of like provoke them a bit or shock them a little bit? Uh, like, um, why are you driven to, to do that? Well, I feel, I feel it's important to keep talking about things that make us feel uncomfortable. And, and it's not about being a, a morbid person or, or pushing the finger in the, in the, in the hole, you know. It's, it's more about uh, the idea of uh, it's very easy for humans to just forget uh, what is happening or what, what's been happening in the past. Uh, sometimes I feel arts and, and many of these objects that we've been founding in the time give us an idea of what exactly was happening in specific moments of humanity. And I feel my, my, the reason that I want to do these objects is because I want to keep um, these topics as a problematic, but also as a way to keep thinking about it and try to don't 
repeat this stuff, no? When, when is the case of uh, something they're representing aggressions or violence or oppression or some kind of uh, abuse. Uh, in other side, sometimes my work can be very, very uh, just, um, how to say it, like very enjoyable maybe um, I'm, 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 and more, more light. But uh, it's, it's very much between these, these two lines, no? between something that is very aesthetical for me that I like and that's why I decide to, to make it. And sometimes I'm trying to, 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 to put a um, finger in, in a very specific direction. Some people take it as uh, something positive sometimes, and some people as something negative. But that's how it is art. So, so I, 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 I keep going. I, I agree. I, I find it positive, and I have always appreciated artists who are not too shy to do that. I mean, I think it's a good technique um, uh, to, to sort of provoke the viewer into thinking new ideas instead of just trying to you know, sort of gently um, confirm what they already think. Uh, but I've, I mean, maybe it's a little more in Canada than Mexico or other places, but I find that's uh, a lot of the more political art, if you can call it that, is more in this gentle way of, um, you know, just like telling people like what to think instead of like uh, cracking open the idea and showing all different sides of it and maybe um, showing things that are sort of like uh, controversial, but like as an artist, like taking those things. And uh, um, an example is, we'll take a look at this slide. It's a, a photo from the exhibition you're in in Guelph here at Kazoo HQ with your, uh, um, the photo collages that we printed on the big pieces of fabric. And one of them yeah, is, it's, Thanks. It's hard to see in the middle, but uh, one of them, uh, uh, I can't remember the title. It's called like, uh, is it called California or Hollywood? Or I can't remember something about that uh, in the middle. And, uh, you know, it's got everything. I wish I had the better resolution file. But one of the things was uh, little images of the original Pepe the Frog. And mm -hmm. some people came in and, and saw that in uh, Guelph. And they were really like, they didn't know what to think because the... <laughs> It was because almost Pepe was there. Yeah, but it, it was almost like this idea that like, well, uh, it's like that's best to be ignored rather than confronted, you know? Yeah. And, and I, 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 f I find that a kind of a strange um, way that people who are artists or enjoy art, they almost want to censor themselves and what their abilities are, what the limits of what they can talk about are. So um, I always appreciate it that you're, you don't shy away from that and uh, kind of like get in the viewer's face a bit. Um, Thank you. And, and, and also it's, it's a something very, uh, that collage, for example, is something very um, biographical because it's, it's a bunch of photos that I took in Los Angeles in, in, in a travel that I made to there. And these, these uh, peps are actually made by, by Matt Fury, the, the guy who created uh, Pepe at his home. Uh, so, so it's not also just like a random Pepe image. It's, it's there because Matt is my friend, and, and I was very interested in what was happening in that moment about Pepe and his relation with, the, with all the Trump situation because they, they start using uh, Pepe as a propagandistic image. And, and that was very, very sad for Matt because also he, he was a, a kind of like a people was aggressive, aggr doing aggressions to, to him and he needs to move out of Los Angeles. So it's very weird how these, these things are having two sides all the time. You know? Some people think, oh, this is very cool. And some people think this, this, this guy uh, is it's, it's crazy. You know? It's really wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's kind of the thing that someone who might be feel weird about that should understand that it was an art object that was taken over by 4chan assholes and then like uh, you know an artist can take it back too to keep that uh yeah, conversation going hard. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's take a look at we're going to take a look at some of your 2d uh work uh like graphics uh paintings drawings uh thing, things like that 
Um, t maybe talk about like how you got, uh, you know, I think that generally, I talked to one artist who never started with drawing and painting, but I think most artists kind of start there. How do you think about like doing two dimensional things, uh, maybe compared to making 3D things or how do you think about it differently, I suppose? That's actually a very complex question for me. It's so strange. Uh, I always have more troubles with bi-dimensional work than with three-dimensional work. Uh, it's so difficult to me to finish something in, 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 in a flat uh, canvas or, or, or paper. So for me, the, the bi-dimensional work, in a kind of way, it's, it's pushing more my, my brain into rethink the possibilities to do something interesting in a, in a flat uh, object. And in the case of a sculpture, it's more, it's more in intuitive. It's more like just taking these objects, try to go out of my brain, and I can create it. Uh, I remember having a, a conversation one time with a friend, and he said, well, um, actually, you are more like a 3D printer. Uh, it's like, a, like the machine. But when you are trying to, to process um, the bidimensional, because I make all these questions about, especially like I have so many questions about what it means to do a painting and not what you are representing at all, more about the material and what, what, is, this, what is happening with those materials together. Uh, it, I don't know, it's a, it's a very complex question for me and I still trying to, to figure out how to deal with bidimensional work. Uh, well, I think I think it's common for people who just paint too. I've noticed that uh, really the paintings are just about paintings now, and they seem obsessed with trying to break out of this tradition that painting has set up over hundreds, thousands of years. And now a lot of it, I find, at least in Canada, it's about like gimmicks of painting. Like how far can you push the definition of painting? It's like. Uh, not not just about like the content anymore or the idea. So I think a lot of people kind of struggle with it because it's like so uh, big and so uh, so many meanings to what a painting is. Um, but your stuff is like kind of like very graphic and uh, um, you know alive and really like bright and aggressive, like your like your sculptures. But uh, you know how, how today like how much of a, your practice is this, or have you really shifted a lot? over to doing sculpture work no i'm actually painting a lot right now and i'm i need to i mean it's a it's something that i'm trying to improve more and really thinking on what it means the painting for me right now uh, i can what i'm trying to look for it's a is this kind of a possibility to create a a filter for another dimension because the painting, it's uh, like another war in another dimension. So whatever I'm trying to represent on the canvas is, is this kind of vision. It's, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, into this visionary art and this kind of like uh, religious experiences, arts. And for me, the painting, it's very much this kind of experiences. So I think that's why it's also creating me so many troubles uh, but at the same time, when I when I feel okay, I get this image and 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 I decide to finish the painting to don't keep putting anymore. Uh, it's something that is coming from the, the the most deeper part of of my brain, and I really don't know how I get into there. But then I know probably what is this means, and and it's a nice practice just to be blind, trying to find something in the darkness, and then trying to recognize it with the with the hands and 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 in in some moment looking to the to this and realize okay i can describe this object but i can try to make this canvas with something that is representing whatever i was trying to find well let's talk a little bit about how you think about that idea you just spoke about i mean i think we both have some interest in whatever you want to call it, occultism, spiritual things, ancient magic, uh, whatever. Um, and I think what I love about your work is you're, I think you're really just following in a tradition that maybe before people thought of themselves as artists, they were, uh, you know, trying to express these ideas visually uh, to give, like what I was talking about is to take some 
clay or whatever and do something to put like a spirit into it. And I, I'm curious how mm -hmm. you think about um, what you're doing because I think you're an, an excellent example of someone uh, who can do this in this um, incredible tradition. Um, like how do you, do you feel like a, I don't know, like a, a responsibility to, to do that or to do it a certain way or um, like what kind of effect are you trying to create as far as like how people feel when they experience your work because it's more than just its form. There's a lot of, uh, often there's a lot of things in it that kind of trigger a lot of feelings about ideas of like, um, of magic and and things beyond mm -hmm. that like how do you think about what you're doing in that tradition or in that way okay i i i really believe art is connected with the spirituality and that that needs to be or art, at least for me that needs to be the most important reason what i'm doing art so so looking on this uh topic uh, i start uh, founding artists in uh -huh. the in the history of arts uh, connected with these ideas and one of the first things that really helped me to to, to follow this path was actually John Milton's uh, Lost Paradise. Uh, after I read Lost Paradise when I was teenage I started looking more into this uh, concept of what is rebellion, what is spirituality, what it means the human soul and that that keep me keep me in a path following things like uh, William Blake, and then uh, I don't know artists like like Goya, for example, in some moment that he was mixing these magical topics and political topics, and Goya was super important for me because then I realized, okay, so it's possible to talk about these things uh, on that way, and and I keep following this stuff now till uh, Austin Osman Spear, uh, Alistair Crowley, who was also kind of a poet and artist, um, Jack Parsons. So uh, who is a scientific, but also magician artist, no? So I, I, I really believe um, the, the reason that it's calling me this kind of uh, a spiritual art path is because you need to keep like uh, uh, keeping these messages and, and, and bringing to another uh, generations. But then the symbols needs to change and you need to readapt all these topics to your contemporary situation. But I don't know, I don't know if I'm doing this good or bad, I'm just trying to do it, you know? And and it's gonna be the time who's gonna judge actually if what I'm doing is just a bunch of crap or was something important for the people. Well, I, I think that it'll be the second part, something important, uh, because I think it's something that people who are dedicating a lot of their life to art uh, a lot of people, that's what they want. And instead of dedicating their life to an organized religion or a certain belief system or whatever, uh, whatever else that they could do, um, they want spiritual fulfillment. They want perhaps some kind of uh, questions or answers or a little of both in it. Um, and, I, and I'm hoping it's not a, a way of thinking that will be lost in contemporary art as it becomes more... Uh, commercialized or um, academic or whatnot. Um, so uh, uh, thank you for continuing to do that. I think it is a very important uh, uh, approach. Um, yeah, and it's not just contemporary art. I mean, it's life in general, which is going more deep into this very superficial and materialistic understanding of what it means to be a human. That, I think that's that's the root of it is like it's a quest for figuring out existence, you know, and why we're here, what we should do, how to love, how to die, how to do all these big questions, you know. Um, so, I mean, I really respond to any work that's about these big questions um, as a universal human experience is really what I'm looking for. In yes, art, I think, you know, beyond race beyond language beyond culture beyond financial situation beyond everything um so i think it's i think it's important and it's, and it's nothing new it's just what people have been doing for tens of thousands of years so thousands of years yeah yeah so no one so you don't stop now because it's it's an important uh, <laughs> role 
Uh, let's let's have a little tour of, of where you're at at your uh, residency uh, um, in Chiapas. Uh, I'd love to take a take a look at where you're living and your some of your work that's there and everything. Let's let's have a tour. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you you want to see now? Please let's and just show us some things. Tell us what we're looking at. It'd be great. Okay, so this is uh, we are inside the house now. Um, this is the main hall. Uh, we have a, a main house for, for the residents. So we share the kitchen here. And there's also uh, a library here. Where I've been uh, collecting all the books of my life so we can uh, share it with all the people who is coming. And many comic books, very important. Um, I'm going to show you the garden now. Uh, this is the garden. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, complicated to keep it clean because it's raining a lot and I'm working very hard to keep it <laughs> the most possible, uh, the, the cleanest possible. This one is Kuka here. <laughs> and yeah, so as you can see, we have a big garden. This is the, the house from the outside. Yeah. So you, you've had uh, maybe, I'm guessing, about two or th two dozen or three dozen people in there at your residency. Is that true? Yeah, we used to have like uh, two artists at the same time sometimes. But most of the time, it's, a, it's more like one artist. Uh, we are a very little team, just uh, me and Julie. Uh, so it's difficult to take care of, uh, of the residents. And, and our own career, our own things. So we don't, we don't like to push us too much. Uh, this is where we are trying to do the new uh, ceramic studio, no? Mm -hmm. Here is the kiln. Your new the kiln. kiln. Sorry? Your new kiln, it's new. Yeah, the new, yeah, people, people help us to, to buy it, uh, buying pipes. So thank you so much, people. A lot of friends. Uh, yeah, this is a new sculpture that, that I'm working now. This is gonna be the triumph of death. So once again, like thinking on all these things going on right now, I'm like reappropriating uh, this very famous painting and doing a sculpture. No. Uh, and yes, you can see more of the garden here. And Alejandro, the, the, uh, the, those uh, those sculptures there, they're like totems. Are, are they are they made of uh, concrete or cement? Are you pouring, making sculptures out of uh, stone like that? How do you make those? This is actually concrete. I'm gonna show you the the portal now. That's what I call the the interdimensional portal. And. I've been working on this for the last four years, I think. Yeah. And it's all made in, in concrete. Some things are uh, like cast, and other are uh, like sculpting uh, in a technique that is a uh, sand cast. Um, and many pieces of uh, ceramic too. Yeah. So yeah, basically it's, uh, it's concrete and sand. Yeah, all this work. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that that's that's uh, beautiful. I love seeing uh, the pictures online. You make uh, making so many of these uh, uh, sculptures in your yard. There, It'll, like last for tens of thousands of years, I think. Uh, I love. I hope. I hope one day you can come and see all this uh, by your own. Well, it's uh, it's. Our great dream to do that, and uh, we're very sad that uh, when we had the opportunity, we couldn't figure it out at that time. But I think about it uh, all the time, and uh, someday, someday, when the the current situation is happen. all over, yes, indeed, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna die without going there for a few weeks. I can guarantee <laughs> you. <laughs> so we have Julie here too. Julie, bonjour. Hello. How are you? <laughs> good. I'm very good. <laughs> so nice to see you. Nice to see you. 
-hmm. And this is the the, uh, the room for the residents. This is the extra cabin. Yeah. Wow. So tell me a little bit about the idea to to do this. As far as like, you know, I'm very very curious uh, about people who, uh, you know, I. I how do you say this if they're artists a lot of times uh, if you're an artist you have to be quite obsessed with yourself and your ideas and whatnot but also like you have to work with other people i think uh to make a community to make things happen you know to be involved in the world how are you thinking about i guess your generosity to make this into a residency as far as how you want to work with other people oh uh, well that's a good question um I'm actually I'm 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 not a easy people an easy person doing a a work on team, but at the same time I like to to share um, your I mean I have this idea about uh, sharing your your privilege in a kind of way okay, and whatever you have if it's big if it's little, but if something that 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 you have and you can share with another people. It's 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 could be easy to do it, you know. So what I've been trying to do is, uh, if I'm already living in this place and I already need to take care of the maintenance and cleaning the garden and all this stuff, what about why not to share it with with another artist, no? And and that's how everything starts. We don't we don't charge uh, artists for participating in the residency. Uh, we don't. We also we don't make any money with this project. It's totally like a, because pure love. We we love to do this, uh, but uh, for sure there's a lot of positive things going on. Maybe you don't you don't make money, but you make connections, and you make uh, uh, relations, a circuit, and that means that maybe in a kind of way you can make money to keep doing this. But um, that's that's the way that we've been working. No, it's it's more about trying to use your privilege, and and share it, and that's gonna create a consequence, and that's make a change of uh, of, of 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 good things. No, a change of privilege. So so that's that's kind of the idea of what what we've been trying to do, and for sure we are very lucky that artists are very generous to 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 believe in the project and to want to be part because they need to, to pay their, their, their tickets to come here and, and the food to stay here. Uh, until now, we, we had uh, 32 artists uh, for the last four years. So we hope we can keep going with this project and keep sharing uh, what we have here down in Mexico. Is that idea you're just speaking about, about sharing, is that right in the title of it, the, da the Dazzo? Uh, does that sort of mean like um, uh, in Spanish, like uh, like a revolutionary idea of like um, giving uh, favors or um, power to people who deserve it? Can you explain exactly what that word kind of translates to? It's, I don't remember. Uh, it, we are trying to found the positive, the positive thing on the concept of the Dazo. Because the DASO is actually a very, very bad uh, concept of how politics and power is working in Mexico and in many other places. But in contemporary art and in, in, in the politics in general, it's very easy to, to just decide, okay, so this person is going to be the next star. Why? Because he's fucking this other person or because he have enough money to found another uh, buyers or whatever. And that's that's what is the dazo means. It's like just pointing with a finger to a specific person who who is is just going to this place without any other filter than the the, the reason that another person wants. Uh, what we are trying to do is to do it in a in a positive way. So creating this concept of the dazo, but more based on the friendship and the trust. And the idea of, okay, yes, all the projects, like uh, our projects, are basically working by the DASO. Uh, most of the residency programs, they, they decide who are they, they are uh, inviting, or a gallery. They, they don't have any kind of democratic, or, or, or uh, you know, like, a, we're going to choose between the others. It's, they just take a decision. So it's we are trying to play with that, but obviously because the word the word have a very negative con connotation, 
um, some people take it as a as a very bad joke, no? Like uh, so, wow, so you maybe you're putting this on our face, on our faces, and 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 actually that's that's the idea. It's like uh, saying, well, this is how our work is working. We can say it as how it is, and trying to do it the most in the in the most positive way that we can. Right, right. To to understand what you have the ability to do. Have you? Have you been thinking at all in the last six weeks, eight weeks about, you know, the situation in the world and how how it, you know, it's very rapidly changed the contemporary art scene uh, in the present? Like it was just about two months ago, we were hanging out in Mexico City and that seems like decades ago how that could exist today. But I mean, when the world sort of slowly comes out of this, um, you know, what lessons do you think maybe the contemporary art world might learn? What things might vanish? What new things might come out? Have you been kind of, it's not very popular to prophesize right now, but I think it's human nature to also try to predict what's coming up in the future. Do you have any, any thoughts about, uh, about how this relates to the contemporary art world? Well, um, you're, you're touching something in, on my heart. Um, I, I really wish uh, this is going to create a, a positive consequence. I hope. Uh, I don't know. It's a contemporary art is very... Uh, it's, it's, it's so complicated how everything is just about the money and moving pieces and, and offers. And, and it, I don't know if, it is, if that's the best way to, to show art, no? And if that actually is leaving us something special and, and not just a bunch of uh, stupid, expensive objects. So I hope maybe this is going to be an opportunity to rethink, especially for artists, if what they are doing is important or not. Uh, because I don't know, it's like there is a bunch of art outside that actually doesn't have, I mean, art doesn't have any function. And that's one of the biggest and important things about it. But in a kind of way, we, we are now uh, surrounded, surrounded of uh, a bunch of uh, really bad art and a bunch of things that are just on relation with market and, and, and prices and speculation. So what is happening right now is that we, we realize the speculation and our markets, you no know, speculation in market specifically, is, is, is going to anywhere. You no, know? it's happening with the oil. It's happening with the with the with the uh, what's the word that with the value the, the money and all this um, so I don't know I hope I hope we're gonna have a, a new reborn for a different kind of uh, discourse and interest things in contemporary art and maybe people is gonna be more uh, open mind but on the other side I wish this is not gonna be the beginning for a crazy propagandistic uh, art you know because uh, it's all the time this we are in the middle of all these things uh, when politic art can become just a propaganda about some topics and when it's really 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 touching uh, all the people around in in a different ways so i, w I wish art can become more uh, what what is used to be uh, something more in connection with with human soul and not in connection with the wallet. I hope so too. I, I, I mean, I've always hoped that, I suppose, but especially now. So in a personal way, what are, what are your plans or what are you thinking about, about your life and what you're going to do in the next few weeks or months or um, has anyone, anything really changed uh, as far as what your hopes are or what, uh, you know, what you're thinking about? Like, what, what, are, what are you thinking about you, what you're going to do in the next little while? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's a good question. I, I'm waiting to, to um, try to organize some plans that, that now are in the air. Uh, I, I postpose a, a show in, in Tokyo and a residency there. Uh, so I wish in some moment these things can, can keep going and happen. Uh, for the other side, uh, we don't we don't see uh, an end in this tunnel yet. We don't have any idea when this is gonna finish in a kind of way. So I think we're just gonna keep working here, uh, trying to to think 
uh, on this and this thing going on. But um, there is not many to do. We 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 probably gonna we are thinking to make a, a little like a, a chicken uh, spot to start having our own eggs and growing more vegetables. We have a lot of fruit trees in the residency that is really good because we can take all this uh, food from our own environment. So that's something that we really want to do, like to work more on the possibility to be uh, auto-sustainable as a person and also have a space where I can keep creating. So that's mean even if I'm not selling art and even if the world uh, goes into a deep hole where art is going to be not that a crazy business anymore, uh, we can keep eating. And, and that's the most important part, to eat and, and produce. So that's the that's the plan, I think. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I think I think that's wise. As if uh, you know, if what's going on can sort of make people's values um, rearrange and get more real. Uh, maybe that's not a you know not a bad thing for people who are not their health isn't affected by the coronavirus and um, you know maybe 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 people have maybe it's time for people to rethink about what they value, what they choose to do with their lives, with their money, with their energy, all these things. So, um, so I appreciate all the, all those thoughts, Alejandro, and I really appreciate you taking uh, the time today to talk to me about your ideas, about your art, give us a tour. And, um, it was really, really nice to chat as always and see uh, Julie for a little bit too. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks very much. And, uh, I hope you stay, stay safe, stay busy. And I look forward to when we can see each other in real life sometime. We'll figure out how to get you back to Canada. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. And it's been a very nice experience to share, uh, all this with you. I'm so happy to, to keep in touch and I'm very happy to see you are, uh, hell and good and your family. It's okay. I'm very productive as always. Well, we're we're trying. We're we're trying to do what we can and I always think that creativity is just like using what you have and we have this yeah. equipment so we can do this. So I don't see why not uh, to try to keep uh, some stories going with people, keep exactly. ideas happening, you know, while people are alone. Um, so we'll talk again soon Alejandro. You take care and good luck with everything in your residency. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything, too. And remember, you are very welcome here anytime after these crazy things finish. I, 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 I promise you that it'll happen and we'll make it a priority when it's, uh, when it's possible. Again, I'd love to spend a few weeks with you and uh, make some pretend that I'm still an artist, not just a curator. Make some art with my, with my family. And <laughs> Eddie's going to love it. Edie will and we love have all it. video games here, too. Edie, and they have a lot of video games, so she's, <laughs> she's sold. All right, take care, Alejandro. We'll talk soon. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. See ya. All right. So that was uh, my, my good friend, an uh, artist. Uh, <coughs> you're back. Edie's back now when it's fine. Uh, Alejandro Garcia Contreras, uh, just talking about his work and what he does, his residency and his ideas behind his incredible work. If you, you can find uh, a lot more of his uh, images online on his uh, website and on his Instagram, constantly posting amazing images of what he's working on. Uh, it's so fantastic uh, to talk to him and uh and uh, thank him once again for spending some time to talk to me about that on open circuit so hope everyone uh enjoyed watching that thanks we had quite a few viewers today thanks for all of your uh comments as well from some people that that we know here and also some of alejandro's other fans uh watching the show um p posting some nice uh comments um we're, uh, we're about to sign off today, but uh, tomorrow, please join us again at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have another uh, amazing artist to talk to, an artist, musician, performer, comedian, event planner, writer, 
micro celebrity mr robert dayton coming in uh via skype from where he's at where he grew up in bc i uh, can't wait to get into it with him a very funny and engaging uh person um so are you ready to play us out here Edie? all right here comes Edie on the keyboards another exciting thing as soon as he's gonna have a f much upgraded keyboard gonna get the intro and exit music a little more uh, a little more pumping a little more dancey uh, maybe some samples thrown in some EDM spectacular stuff well thanks to all of you we'll see you uh, back here tomorrow at 2 p.m.